Greetings, everyone. Nate the Nerd Arc here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with some nerds. Nerdarch is Ted. Nerdarch is Dave. Today we're doing a Final Fantasy inspired character build, The Dragoon. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. All right, so you have an idea. You want to do this crazy dragoon Final Fantasy style character build. <laughs> yeah, ever since we were going to do like the tenth level um, multi uh, level uh, multi class character build, and we played that game, I was like, I almost made the dragoon, but I decided not to. So, so what's like, Final Fantasy? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, they... nerd card revoked. <laughs> A while ago, there was this game. <laughs> All right, so uh, most and now of there's you, like 17 of them. <laughs> most of you are aware there's a Final Fantasy video game that's out there. It's come in all kinds of iterations and whatever have you. But for the initial, you know, release Super Nintendo. Only I know. Only thing I know about Final Fantasy is, is that they're saying that they can't go to Final Fantasy 30 for obvious reasons. <laughs> Roman numerals. Yeah, well, I know. I know. So anyway, don't uh, search for Final day. Fantasy Thirty. I'm just saying, <laughs> or maybe you do it. I don't know. So Final, Final Fantasy Two. I don't. Was it five in the the correct order? I remember just playing two, three, four, and two and three. They've got the. Um, there is Ricard, Highwind, and Kane. And they're the dragoons that we know about from the beginning. Now, they're kind of like storyline wise, they're like the last of the dragoons. And the dragoons were these uh, people that had affinity for weverns and dragon king kind of things. So I think that would translate into like flying winged now, serpents. To be clear, this does not involve the Protoss. No. No, no Protoss involved. Okay. Just no Zerg, that. none of that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so you have this guy, they looked very draconic in the armor they wore. Uh, and they were known for being able to do very specialized attacks with spear and lance, uh, which included leaping very far and coming down on the foe. No, it, it, it was ridiculous jumping because, you know, it was a total turn-based style game. So when you selected Kane to attack and you chose jump, he would leap into the air. On the following round, he would return to deliver his attack and damage. Which also meant he was safe from attacks while he was in the air. Sounds like a good move to me. <laughs> you know, we're like, well, how would we go about making this ridiculous jumper and attacking with you know, a, a long you know, spear, lance type weapon in 5th edition? So, all right, so we're looking at things now. Nate and I discussed this at length. And believe me, there are many iterations of ways to go about doing this. And but first, you guys are just going to tell us the best, right? No. Are you going to tell us the worst? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tell us the one that best I feel like is the best fit without involving magic. Because they did also, everybody had, I feel like everybody had magic mm -hmm. in the Final Fantasy games. Okay, so um, let's let's start from the beginning. Yeah. What race is our, is our dragoon? Well, I believe Kane is human, so yes. I would make this guy human. Perfect. We can go back, we can circle back to that in a bit. Okay. So we're going to use the variant human? Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Okay. We're going to want a few feats. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, he is, it, so it's like a knight, right? So like a paladin or a fighter? Fighter. I think yeah. fighter is going to be our, our primary for this particular character. And we're looking at going champion, and champion specifically for one ability. Okay. Well, uh, and the fighting ability. So well, you want to at least take it to seventh, because that's going to give you the, the peerless athlete. And that allows you to, well, like how we said, jumping is a big deal on this. It's going to allow you to jump farther. So it's just going to add your strength modifier to how far you can actually go. All right. So another, another aspect to this is that they look draconic. And not draconic as in they're the actual race of dra dra uh, Dragonborn, but that they wear armor that is going to make them look dragon-inspired. So I was like, mm -hmm. well, okay, so let's just say Cosmetics. That Cosmetics. So for, let's say for a while, in our idea of what a dragoon would be, you're a fighter for a while, and then eventually you get to like this pinnacle point where they say, all right, you can be an initiate dragoon, and we're going to, here's your armor, and here's your ring of jumping. <laughs> <laughs> now, the ring of jumping is incredibly important to this build, and we'll get into that, but having access to jump is essential to be able to mimic 
what was done in the game. So if you're a DM uh, or you aren't just willing to hand out this these magic items, you can always have it be where you take a like some way magic initiate will give you the access to the jumping of uh, jumping jump spell. And you can also take a few levels, if you need to, of some other kind of spellcaster. Nate seriously, in, in our initial discussions, was like, well, if we take Warlock to level 9, you can take the invocation, uh, you know, to allow you to cast Jump at will. And that was want, on. That was in the initial design. And if you want to make a, cre a slightly creepier, more, like, shamanistic um, version of, of this guy, because they did have a little bit of magic, mm -hmm. uh, you could go and do do that route especially if your dm's like no you can't even have an uncommon magic item all right so you you get your ring of jumping and you get your dragon scale mail as you become your initiate and you're ready to continue your pursuit into dragoon hood yeah so another thing aside from the seventh levels minimum of champion is that i wanted to add a bit of barbarian for this first off for um some extra movement and as well as some extra damage because these are these are hard-hitting fighters uh, and uh, one of the things with the uh, to bring up with the the scale mail, the dragon mail, is that it's not heavy armor, so it will work out with with the uh, barbarian. You just won't get to use the unarmored bonus of of the the barbarian that they normally get, which is not a problem because if you actually you know work through this build, you're actually going to get armor equivalent to a, to plate mail anyway. Because if you take medium armor master. That that makes your 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 dex cap a three instead of a two, combined with you know the the dragon scale mail, works works out to be the same. So if you take that barbarian now out to fifth level, that you may or may not want to do it, but that would give you uh, an extra ten foot of movement, which will become important later. Yes, and also if we take it to the point where you can take the eagle totem, I believe at third, you'll get the eagle's ability to get disadvantage. I mean, for other people, when they tr try to hit you with opportunity attacks, they gain disadvantage, which is really good because we're going to be leaping through areas of uh, uh, attack of opportunity areas. So th this, you know, while, while it's not necessarily leaping way up into the air, avoiding all the attacks like the video game, it is kind of cool because it allows you to still be jumping and attacking and can look really cool. We're getting closer yes. to avoiding the attacks. Yes. You know, at least partially avoid the attacks of opportunity. So why we said the variant human was important is because for this build, aside from barbarian and uh, champion, you're gonna need uh, some feats. And one of those feats is charger, um, mainly because you can, as an action, uh, charge, and then as your bonus action, you can attack. And to that attack, you can add plus five to the damage. Or yeah. you can push them 10 feet, but you yeah. wanna add plus five. You to wanna the add damage. five. To add, add the five of damage. But on top of that, if you stack the Great Weapon Master, where you take the minus to hit, you're going to do plus ten to damage. Then if you stack that with your Rage, and you stack that with your Strength Modifier, you're going to be hitting pretty hard. That's a plus twenty-two, probably. If you're getting all the way up to twenty, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you should. <laughs> <laughs> and like, here's the thing, too. There's other feats that you could actually stack into this to make it you know, even better. So mobility will give you more options as well because you'll, you'll have more movement. So now we're going from a 30 to a 50 if we feel like we need it. We also have to use our dash in order to use that charger. So that gives us 100 feet to play with. You're, you're going to move around pretty well. I think we figured it out to where you can like leap 24 feet into the air or something. <laughs> and if you use something like a halberd, um, which, I mean, it's like a great spear. Or know. pike. Pike or, works. Or a pike. You can you're hitting from reach, so you're not even actually engaging with them. So you can hit, you can leap, hit them, and then leap back, which I think is very like the classic thematic kind of dragoon attack. It's so true. He lands and then bounces back to the line. And, he's a tigger. He's not actually a dragoon. He's a tigger. And with your ring of jumping and a twenty strength, you're not just like hopping back. You can leap up into the air twenty four feet. If you do a high jump. If and, you do a high jump. And your long jump is, is further than that. <laughs> and if you feel like you're not taking stat increases or anything like that and you want to take more feats, they're, they're still Polar Master and Sentinel. Uh, and Sentinel if you really wanted to get crazy with that build. Yeah, because then, I mean, if you hit them with Sentinel, then. Then they can't move. There's all the, oh yeah, there's all this other kind of opportunities open up. So you could really help control the battlefield, leap in and out of danger. I feel like with this build, you would take, you know, 15 levels of fighter 
and then to do the five levels of barbarian and that that that's going to that's going to kind of even you out and it's going to give you an extra maybe one feet to play with and uh, another thing with taking the extra levels of fighter you get the extra attacks as well as a second fighting style so you're going to have both great weapon fighting and defense so you can have that extra ac so you can pretty much be walking around in full plate but you're in medium armor so, you know, some people says Dragoon, other people might say Hoppy Bouncy Juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you're leaping through the air and you're hitting really hard. So, uh, what does that leave us, the complete or Dragoon? All right, so we need the background and we need some skills. Well, clearly this guy has to be proficient in athletics. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what else is he going to possibly need? Uh, maybe some high altitude uh, adaptation or something? <laughs> well, I'm going to say because of the... If if your if your DM will allow it, I think you could do some animal handling with a wyvern riding, if that's possible. So, oh yeah, or that could be vehicles land, uh, <laughs> vehicles air. <laughs> yeah, vehicles, vehicles air. Vehicles yeah, air. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you could get a hold of those three, that would be good. Athletics, uh, animal handling, and uh, vehicles. So you feel like those are like the the must haves. Yeah, because well, you know there's the rapport with the wyvern, and then there's also the actual physical moving with it so okay all right well so then that brings us to backgrounds right you know when you when you mention this that i automatically think about you know the noble variant knight yes i was thinking warrior so i i went soldier well i you know i've kind of come around a little bit on the soldier only because they get vehicles land and why not just flip it to air yeah and you're like almost there so i think that kind of works and you know you you mentioned you know the the knight and i'm like oh well that totally you know creates this whole process of this guy being important so we're like we got a met in the middle ground <laughs> yeah either one of those would probably work then i mean really it just comes down to role playing and how you got how you want to present the character in the world and really what you want to do with this you know societal order uh you know if it's actually a thing then you might want to go with a knight where if it's something that He's kind of creating it. Or if it's maybe. some mad hermit in the wood training dragoons. <laughs> then soldier <laughs> would probably soldiers. work better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just need to know, you know, what's what's the deal with, you know, the surplus of rings of jumping and where are they getting all this dragon scale from? <laughs> it's just from it's, the skies. Hey, maybe it's a dragon that just lets them chop up one of its scales that falls off. I mean, they're pretty probably pretty big. So a few of those chipped away. You know, there's a whole other order that hunts, hunts dragons just for these guys. Could we have your extra scales, please? All right, so wh what do you guys think? Is there something that we, uh, that, that we missed? Is there something we got right? Let us know what you guys think down in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or you can tweet at us at Nerdarchy. Yeah, so patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.